you are with us here on the Business Today show. I am Abha Bakaya. Let's take you through the headlines. Retro tax deadlock untangled. Kane Energy accepts a $1 billion refund offer set to drop all cases against India soon. Markets end flat. Sensex closes at 58,279. The Nifty drifts below 17,400. Bharti Airtel, HDFC among the top gainers today. Gold prices could spike ahead of the festive season as demand picks up. As the Taliban banned dollar outflow, Surat garment merchants feel the pain with over 250 crore rupees stuck in the Kabul freeze. Twist in Balaji Telefilm's plot, shareholders spike pay hikes for Aisha Kapoor and her mother. The big news of the day is a settlement between Cairn Energy and the government of India. The British company has announced that it will drop all litigation against the Indian government. In return, the government will refund uh, the energy major $1 billion. That was the amount seized under the old retrospective tax law. Let's take a look at what the government of India, Kane Energy Settlement, will do for the Indian investment climate. In a major olive branch to the Modi government, the UK-based Kane Energy has accepted government's $1 billion offer and said it will drop all litigation against the government and halt its move to seize Indian government assets abroad. The move comes a month after the government enacted a new law to drop 1.1 lakh crore rupees in outstanding claims against multinationals such as the telecom group Vodafone, pharmaceuticals company Sanofi, brewer Saab Miller, and can energy. The old and controversial law gave the Indian tax authorities the power to go back 50 years and charge capital gains wherever ownership had changed overseas for companies doing business in India. Around 8,100 crore rupees has already been collected from various companies of which 7,900 crore rupees was due only on can energy. In retaliation, Can had sued the Indian government in courts in Paris and the US trying to seize diplomatic apartments in Paris and Air India assets in the US. Can claims it will use the refund to return $700 million to shareholders via a special dividend of half a billion dollars and a share buyback of $200 million. The rest, it says, will be used to further expansion of low-cost, sustainable energy sources. The agreement is a major victory for the Modi government's effort to make India more investor-friendly. The retrospective law was a major repellent. The move will also help in the disinvestment of Air India, whose overseas assets were under the proverbial can sword. The agreement is a major victory for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's big push to make our country an investor-friendly one. The retrospective tax was a big repellent. Most of the investors were shying away from investing in our country because of that tax. Now this agreement will also help in the disinvestment of, of Air India. And the reason is that a lot of Air India's assets which are abroad are under the cane sword. Sreshwara Palival reporting for Business Today in New Delhi. Business Today TV has dug out five major impacts. The first one, it's the first actionable deal after the old retro tax law was scrapped. It will be a huge boost for big ticket foreign investment. Number two, it will help India gain an image of being an attractive investment destination. Number three, the settlement projects a new era of stability in Indian policy making. Number four, Cairns' action has also averted potential humiliation for India 
which faced the embarrassment of seizure of its foreign assets. And number five, last but not least, Air India's disinvestment can now proceed without any hurdles. Markets today taking a breather after three consecutive sessions of uh, good gains. Benchmarks today hitting new record highs during trade, of course, uh, but closing the session uh, with marginal losses, seeing some profit booking at higher levels and clearly consolidating. In the afternoon session, the Sensex made a fresh life high of 58,553. The Nifty rose to a new peak of 17,436, finally closing the day down 16 points. And the Sensex also on your screen was down about 17 points. Real estate, IT, oil and gas, those were some of the top uh, sectoral losers. And uh, in fact, we've seen a good run across some of those sectors. Telecom, consumer durables, FMCG, those pockets uh, are really where we saw gains in today's session. So telecom, real estate, uh, consumer durables, pardon me, and FMCG. For those looking to invest in gold this festive season, this could be uh, the uh, time to actually look at doing so. Business Today TV has uh, spoken to uh, several analysts on the gradual spike in demand and whether or not it will lead to higher prices in jewelry showrooms. Interestingly, prices of the yellow metal have actually been stable for the past couple of weeks on fears of lower demand. However, global gold prices are seen firming up on the back of a softer dollar and also the US Fed actions. Prabhleen Bajpai, founder of uh, FinFix Research and Analytics, are uh, joining us on this. Prabhleen, what's your outlook on uh, gold prices ahead of festive season? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Indians uh, love gold. Of course, 11% uh, you know, of the Indian household wealth is uh, in gold as per the RBI report. And that is why I think we saw so much gold. Uh, uh, you know, the Indian householders has the potential to take loans against gold. Uh, as far as gold prices are concerned, you know, it is not just a domestic phenomena, but a lot is also dependent because it's a dominant uh, dollar denominated asset class. So a lot actually depends on um, how, uh, you know, globally things will be. Now, uh, let's say in US, you know, the non-farm payrolls were week and um, we saw that this may not actually uh, you, uh, you know the Federal Reserve may not go and do the monetary tightening too soon and if that doesn't happen it definitely uh, supports the gold prices but as soon as the monetary tightening will start uh, you know we'll see gold weaken a bit we've already seen it uh, uh, down by 13 percent over the last quarter uh, but I think going forward it's going to be range bound as far as I understand and um, with a little upside bias mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, the USD and I are, uh, you know, that will uh, play its role, the exchange rate. Thanks for that, Prabhleen. Mr. Soma Sundram, uh, a regional CEO, India of the World Gold Council, also joining us uh, this evening. Mr. Soma Sundram, great to have you with us. Uh, you know, while I know you don't forecast prices, I'd love to get your thoughts on the trend because we've seen extreme volatility when it comes to prices on the yellow metal. And there are a lot of questions on whether or not we'll see the usual uptrend ahead of festive season. Uh, Exactly. There has been volatility more towards the downward uh, trend, which is pretty good. Actually, for the consuming market, mm. which is the beauty of gold, when prices keep going up, it went up really to $2,000 in, and in Indian rupee touched even 55000 mm. There are investors who actually support gold. And when the you know, prices turn otherwise, uh, you see that consumers walk in and investors get a little less interested in this. And we saw that inflows and outflows of ETFs display this trend. Now, uh, consumers have actually seen, if you take the last two years, since 2019 August, prices have really shot up. We were looking at 30, 32,000 then, now we are looking at uh, 48,000 and the GST and all that stuff, it really touches 50,000. So this is a big jump. Nobody's incomes have gone up that much. So given that uh, situation, I think you know, still a steep increase. But having said that, People have seen 55, now they're seeing 47, 48. It's a very, very good entry point for the consumers. And as, as uh, you know, vaccination program has also improved and people have started coming out, I think this is going to be a good festive season. So while we have you, Mr. Soma Sundram, I'd love to get your thoughts uh, on uh, digital gold. We've been hearing so much about it and talking about it, the investor point of view. What is digital gold? What is it all about? 
Well, digital gold, first of all, is a physical gold. People buy it on digital platforms. Mm. You have a couple of platform providers like MMTC, PAMP, Augmont, Safe Gold. You know, these are people who actually sell and buy gold from uh, the investors. The investors could be anybody. They could be on a Paytm wallet, phone pay wallet. They could even be in a securities company. And uh, they, they actually, the click of the button, even for one rupee, they get gold for that day. And the price is transparently displayed. And if they don't want it, they can sell it. Of course, when they buy, it has GST. When they sell, the GST is not collected because you are a consumer, you can't get back the GST. And there will be obviously transparent prices. So the good thing is, the moment you buy gold, you, you, uh, uh, these companies uh, keep it in a separate vault. It is managed by independent uh, custodians. They also have, uh, I think some of them, have registered uh, these uh, trustee companies which take care of the fact that there is so much gold behind it and once a person has accumulated up to one gram each company has its own rules but i think uh, up to one gram they can even ask for delivery obviously when you ask okay. for delivery you pay for the minting charge and the delivery charges but All if right. you don't want you can sell it straight away the good thing is it is it makes gold accessible. You can accumulate exactly. in small lots. You know, you can accumulate even for 100 rupees. And so what several, is that? Several ways there rupees. that one could look at accumulating gold this festive season, whether it be in small amounts and uh, through digital methods, or of course, uh, buying uh, jewelry and uh, other items during festive season. Mr. Soma Sundaram, great to have you with us. Thanks so much for uh, sharing some of the latest trends when it comes to the gold uh, market. Now, encouraging signs of an economic recovery from uh, the COVID dark ages. A survey by the RBI has uh, shown some interesting stats on manufacturing, IT and non-IT service companies. They're strongly rebounding from the lockdowns. The survey shows sales of more than 1,000 600 uh, manufacturing companies recording an extraordinarily high growth of 75% in the April to June period, though this was in part aided by the low base effect. Sales of IT companies accelerated by around 18% in this period. Importantly, the operating profits of both manufacturing and service sector companies recorded uh, high growth uh, in the quarter and uh, all around good news being seen in those segments. As festive season approaches and very quickly it is uh, a double whammy for car sales in India. Car dealers have warned of a shortage of popular models in the next few months even as the industry tries to recover from its Covid slump. Federation of Auto Dealers Association or FADA, the umbrella of auto dealers in India has said and we quote, the semiconductor shortage has become a full-blown crisis with no light in sight. The car sales in August announced today do not inspire confidence, though car and SUV sales are up 32% from those in August 2019. Two-wheeler sales have slumped nearly 23%. We are comparing with 2019 because last year's figures were also impacted by the lockdown. Sales of commercial vehicles, a gauge for economic activity, are also down 15% from 2019. Ekta Kapoor is the latest business tycoon to fall victim to investor activism. The brain behind the modern SaaS Bahu relations and TV soap operas seems to have faltered in her relations with investors. She is the undisputed queen of soaps. Someone who introduced a wide range of emotions to television primetime with her blockbuster SaaS Bahu shows. But what Ekta Kapoor, the begum of binge, did not expect was this twist in the story of her Balaji empire. In the annual general meeting of the company held on the 31st of August, shareholders rejected a proposal to update her pay package for the next two years. More than 55% of the public, non-institutional or small shareholders voted against the remuneration deal for Kapoor, who is the joint managing director of Balaji Telefilms. In the other vote, nearly 57% of shareholders voted against a two-year pay package for Shobha Kapoor, Ekta's mother and managing director of the company. This is a blow for Ekta Kapoor, widely credited with revolutionizing television viewing in India with one blockbuster soap after the other. Her latest venture of streaming content has been reasonably successful, adding over 900,000 active subscribers in the April-June period. 
Her television vertical is currently producing six shows and five movies are in the pipeline. However, Balaji Telefilms posted a consolidated loss of 34 crore rupees in the April-June period of this fiscal. The dividend for the year ended March the 31st, 2021 was just 20 paise per share. It would appear these numbers have not sat well with small investors who've increasingly been making themselves heard in corporate boardrooms. First, it was Aicha Motors who planned to increase their managing director Siddhal Lal's remuneration by 10% ran afoul with shareholders. Now, Ekta Kapoor has had to face music from her shareholders who want the begum of bins to boost the balance sheet of Balaji Telefilms. With camera person Hemant Mustafa Sheikh in Mumbai for India Today. A special PMLA court in Mumbai on Tuesday cancelled all non-bailable warrants against Nirav Modi's brother-in-law, Mayak Mehta, along with his wife, Purvi, who is Nirav Modi's sister. Mayank Mehta had in January sought to become an approver in a money laundering case filed by the Enforcement Directorate against Nirav Modi and others. Mehta travelled from Hong Kong to Mumbai and appeared before the course Tuesday morning. The ED had already recorded uh, his statement on video conference, which it now needs to confirm. The disruption of banking services in Afghanistan post the August 15 coup by Taliban has put the textile merchants in crisis. Receivables of over 4,000 crore rupees are stuck after the Afghan Central Bank imposed curbs on international transfers. With the U.S. freezing the assets of the Afghan Central Bank and the Afghanistan Bank and slamming brakes on dollar supply, the Afghan economy is in a tailspin. The crisis has deepened after the IMF and major aid donors too have snapped dollar flows. The local currency Afghani has fallen to record lows, leading to high inflation. The Taliban administration, which calls itself the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, has put cash withdrawal limits at local banks and banned dollar transfers outside the country in a bid to conserve dollars. In faraway Surat, Indian textile traders feel the pain of these decisions. The Federation of Textile Merchants say its members are anxious as over 250 crore rupees is stuck in Afghanistan because of these restrictions. हमारा जो व्यापार होता है इनसे दो से ढाई महीने में हमारा पेमेंट आता है तो 300 करोड़ ढाई से 300 करोड़ का ही हमारा पेमेंट है वो रुका हुआ है व्यापार कंप्लीटली स्विच है क्योंकि ऐसी परिस्थिति में जब वहाँ मार्केट ही नहीं खुले हैं तो कौन व्यापार करने जाएगा? The Federation is looking to the government for help as the situation in Afghanistan does not seem to be improving anytime soon. In future, if the government rules and regulations are in place, and the situation is closed, then they will also like to do the case payment. As far as they are doing it, they will not do the case payment. It's not just these merchants, but Indian auto majors and construction companies too are looking at the government for answers to salvage their investments and receivables stuck in this volatile, landlocked country. But given the instability, there is little they do but wait and watch. With Sanjay Rathod in Surat, Bureau Report, Business Today Television. After Bombay, Burma and Go Air, Jahangir Nusli Wadia is now out from the board of Britannia Industries. The food and beverage major, Britannia, said that vacancy that has risen from Jay's exit from the board will not be filled. This marks yet another exit by the younger son of Nusli Wadia from companies in the family empire. There are rumoured differences with Father Nusli Wadia. Are these the reason? For more on the story, we are joined by Business Today Deputy Editor Krishna Gopalan. Krishna, thanks for joining us. Uh, Jay is a man hugely passionate about the aviation business and that led him to set up Go Air back in 2005 as a low-cost operation. Is the airline the reason that Jay has been grounded from family boards, the, the flagging fortunes of the airline? Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, aviation was and continues to be Jay Wadia's big passion. The rub in the entire story was that it was being funded by the Wadia group mm -hmm. and that was something Nasri Wadia was distinctly uncomfortable with. Uh, Go ahead didn't really raise any money and to be fair to Jay Wadia, he ran a fairly profitable operation till FY19. FY20, which was a bad year for the aviation industry, saw Go Air also slip into the red with a host of other airlines. 
It was exactly at this point when Nasri Wadia decided to take Charger Airline and in a very interesting turn of events, you had Jay Wadia stepping down not just as MD of Go Air, but also as MD of Bombay Tang, the perhaps the most well-known company within the Bombay Tang, within the Wadia group. So that's really where the uh, tables turned. And now we have a situation where Jay Wadia has not just stepped down, but the future also looks pretty uncertain. So where does Jay go from here now, Krishna? What's going to happen next? Uh, does Nisli have uh, plans for the airline? Well, the immediate plan is to get uh, Go Air listed. And uh, the interesting thing again here is that the brand name Go Air rests with Jay Wadia. So Mr. Wadia, Nasri Wadia therefore had to change it to Go First, and that's really the name of the airline. Uh, we have a situation where the offer document has been filed with the regulator, and once it gets approval, we obviously will see the listing of Go First at some point. Speaking for Jay on his own, okay. the decision to step down from Britannia and Bombay Burma pretty mm -hmm. much severs all links from the listed companies of Wadia Group. Bombay Burma is the company from very start of career, and Britannia is the one which is the single largest company within the Wadia Group. And now you have a situation where the younger of the two Wadia sons is out of the picture completely. All right, uh, he clearly is, uh, and it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens uh, to the Go Air IPO. Thanks for joining us, Krishna, on that. We're out of time here on the Business Today show. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, do stay tuned to India Today. Good night.